Good morning, Fort McMurray and Wood Buffalo, and for that matter, the rest of the world. Uh, my name is Elliot Pierre, and you've tuned into the Max City Morning Show. As per usual, we'll start this show off the same way we start every show off, by me saying thank you to you. I know that you could be doing a million other things with your time, so the fact that you've tuned in to spend it with myself and the guests and the man behind the camera, Tanner, uh, really does mean the world to me. So thank you very much for tuning in and uh, spending some time with us. And on that note, Tanner, hit him with the intro. How she caught me, loves. You're listening to the Max City Morning Show. All right, and we're back. Okay, so as per usual, I do not introduce my guests. I let them introduce themselves because they can obviously do a better job at saying who they are than I can. So on that note, let's find out who our guest is today. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Tell the people at home who you are and what you're about. Hi, Elliot. Uh, I'm Steve Audi. I'm, uh, I'm president of Buildwood Buffalo, home builders, land developers, and renovators in Fort McMurray. Um, and uh, I've been here for a long time. I started with Sincrude in 1977 and uh, retired about six years ago. And um, I, I'm on a bunch of boards and different boards and uh, just stay involved and um, just try and help the community. Yeah, you're definitely a community uh, activist. That's for sure. Every event, every volunteering, anything that's going on, you're definitely, you're everywhere. I do. Yeah, well, there's a lot to do. So uh uh, yeah, I do get involved in a lot. It's uh, it's exciting. It's interesting. I meet a lot of people, and um, yeah, it can make a difference. There you go. So you moved here in 1977. That's that was correct. the same year my parents moved here, and you know my right. my my mom and dad. Sure. Um, I'm always fascinated in regards to how people heard about Fort McMurray, especially back then. So how did you hear about Fort McMurray, and then what gave you the drive to come here? Yeah, well, um, I was in, uh, I, I studied agriculture in, uh, at the University of Guelph in Ontario, and then, um, and then uh, Alberta uh, needed, um, I was hoping to work for, in research in Alberta, so we, we came to Calgary, and then uh, I wasn't able to get on with, uh, with the government in Alberta, so I worked on dairy farms, and while I was down there, I heard about Fort McMurray, and, okay. um, and then... Um, there was opportunity, uh, there was um, good jobs, and uh, I was hoping to save some money and buy a farm. And uh, so we moved up here, and actually just around here was, uh, we, our first job was in Abbasan, painting the uh, exterior of houses. My wife and I just, uh, um, we actually painted a, two streets, and uh, it was a fun time, and uh, Fort McMurray was, um, you know, just growing and uh, it was absolutely incredible, but that's what got us here. And uh, and then I got on with Syncrude in 1977, and um, and my wage kept going up, and farm income didn't. So uh, <laughs> I never did get into farming, but uh, yeah, no regrets. It was absolutely amazing, and it was an amazing community. And um, yeah, we're still here. There you go. Now, um, for most of the people watching this, they're watching it on their phones or on their computers. When you want to research a community or hear about a community, you just go online. So I know when I, I talked to my dad about how he found out about Fort McMurray, he happened to be in a coffee shop and he just had a newspaper and there was an ad. And he was just like, oh, interesting. So when you heard about it, was it word of mouth? Was it a radio? Was it a newspaper? What was, how did you first hear or see Fort McMurray existed? Word of mouth, some friends talking and um, yeah, then we looked into it and got in our truck and drove north. That's awesome. No, it's just definitely, uh, I like, as most people know at this point, I'm born and raised here. So I like to think I'm adventurous. However, like individuals like you and my father and everybody who moves here, just that's a big leap. Like when you were a young man, you definitely were adventurous to just be like, you know what? I'm going to move from Guelph, Ontario to Alberta from Alberta, Calgary, to Fort McMurray, who definitely had a sense of adventure built into you. We were squatting, too. We had a, <laughs> okay. we had a trailer, and yeah. uh, we lived in a trailer, uh, my wife and I and a dog, and, um, and we were end up where the uh, motocross park is now. Oh, and, right. And they, right. they cleared an area for, for new people, and uh, it was just a clay, mucky area that, uh, yeah, so worked and ended up, Renting a mobile home downtown, and then and then we we moved into the Civics when Syncrude 
hired me. We moved into the civics just over here and, right. uh, and, um, yeah. And then, and then I built my first house in 1981 in Dickensfield. Okay. And our, I don't want to give away your address. Are you still in Dickensfield? I still own the uh, house nice. um, and, and I rent it, but I, I got into construction. So uh, I built a bunch of houses and I, I've kept that house and I moved into one of the houses we built. Okay. Right on. What you just said, I don't think many people will know. Like I take it for granted because I've been here forever and I know the history of Fort McMurray or some of it. But yeah, Syncrude used to own a number of houses in Abyssin. And people don't remember that. And then, Syn- yeah, Syncrude was in the housing game. It was called it. Northward. And um, it's, it's unfortunate they're, you know, they're, they're still not doing that. And right now they're actually, um, uh, the, the oil companies are hugely supporting camps. And, um, and that's really uh, um, a focus of Build Wood Buffalo. And so we supported the moratorium on camps. And, um, and uh, you know, there's some challenges, but it's very different than when I started at St. Crude. And, you know, incredibly, when I started at St. Crude, uh, there was um, not an option. You had to live here. Mm. And, um, <clears throat> and right now, they're giving people options. You don't have to live here. Mm. And so then, we, you know, we would like to challenge that and, and, and have people, because our community is really suffering, as you're, you know, everybody's well aware. And, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it wouldn't take us, us much to get back on track. Right. So let's talk a little bit about that uh, Billwood Buffalo that you're talking about. Uh, people at home who have never heard of them before, what's your initiative? What's the goal of that organization? Okay, Billwood Buffalo was uh, established in um, 1998 as uh, Wood Buffalo Builders Association, and then um, it amalgamated with the Urban Development Institute out of Alberta, out of Edmonton. And, and then we've changed to BILD, B-I-L-D. So that's another association that uh, is a provincial association, BILD Alberta. And that represents home builders, land developers, and renovators, um, and, um, you know, at, at many different levels. And so Build Wood Buffalo um, is, we pay um, a, a, a large portion of our membership to build Alberta and also to the Canadian Home Builders Association. Okay. And what we do is we, those organizations um, look into code and uh, building code, um, safety codes, um, uh, legislation that, that influences that's coming down. There's a real, um, <clears throat> there's a real um, uh, direction on um Right across Canada, on putting levies on new developments, which then mean that the developers have to pay for even fire trucks, okay. which then they have to put onto the price of the lots, which means that the people buying end up paying substantially more than the people that have already bought. Right. So you know, challenging what's realistic and what's fair. Mm. So that needs to be done at a provincial level, right? you know, it, trying to influence the actual legislation to understand what's coming. Right. And so that's a big part of, uh, of our organization. Then our local organization gets involved in, we're on a number of committees. So uh, we're on the, the Waterfront Committee, the, the Land Development Committee, the Downtown Development Committee, um, about five different committees that we have some of our members that are involved with and interacting with to better understand and to, you know, just to... to, to, to to represent that part of the conversation so that's awesome so we uh yeah we we try to um we're trying to get new members we used to be a big organization that when now there's no home building so uh there's not a lot of motivation for people to join us but uh we're still a strong organization um all volunteers and um and uh, we're trying to get up and running and i really think there's a strong future with uh you know fifty dollar um um Western Canada Select and $60 WTI. I which recently are uh, seeing uh, some reports that the cash flow is going to be amazing. So um, we're expecting that, uh, <clears throat> that that will start to really shine a light in our future here. So we're looking forward to that. That's awesome. I love the optimism. That's phenomenal. Well, finally, it's been, yeah, we're at the bottom. Yeah. You know, one thing really quickly, uh, Demographia did an analysis um, two years ago. They do an annual um, uh, survey of the whole world of house affordability. Mm. And shockingly and incredibly, Fort McMurray is the most affordable in the whole world. I read based that. on family income. 
And yeah, demographia, look it up. Um, I think we're page 14, um, and we're right there, number one affordable. Um, so in Fort McMurray, it's about uh, the family income, about average family income, according to the mayor, is about 204,000, depending on what the, you know, there's different ways to look at that, but mm -hmm. uh, average price of about 430 or even less now. So uh, that's about two to one ratio. Edmonton, Calgary's five or six, to one ratio, Toronto's 10, and sub actually substantially more now with the prices have gone through the roof, mm -hmm. and Vancouver's 20 times family income to buy a house. Right, right. It's crazy. And so we are the most yeah. affordable, and we need Canada to know that. Yeah. And that will then attract people here and get our community back on track, because um, as you know, it's, it's, been a tough it's, one. it's been a tough one. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's phenomenal information to share. And a number of guests have uh, said it as well here, myself included. Fort McMurray gives you every opportunity in the world. You can literally come here and do whatever you want. If I wanted to be a firefighter tomorrow, I could go down to the hall and they would be able to explain how I could become a firefighter. Um, it's not guaranteed, but I have a shot to do it. If I want to decide to be a truck driver, there's a path for me to be a truck driver at any point in time. For goodness sakes, my background is human resources, and I did that for many years, and I loved it, and now I'm doing a podcast. So Fort McMurray definitely is a, an amazing community that allows you to really kind of go after your dream and achieve whatever you want. So it's cool. You know, it's wonderful to hear you say that, because you've talked to a lot of people and from your circles yeah. um, and exposure, because that's also my experience. Right. You know, for 39 years at Syncrude, I've seen people come and go, but I've seen young people being put into positions that uh, that other places wouldn't. My daughter, she's 24 now, she's a journey person electrician mm. working on 400 ton haul trucks mm. out at site for a contractor. And uh, you know, in, in, in Prince Edward Island where my wife is from, um, there's just so few jobs at um, women in all probability wouldn't even get into the trade. Right. And here she is working on 400 ton haul trucks. My son's out at the fire bag. Um, he's working on high voltage power systems. But so many people that I've seen come and get put into positions that, um, you know, do, you know, what are you doing? And mm -hmm. uh, then they get mentored. And uh, I mean, it, even in the, the trades with the career and co-op, uh, we brought people into the shops that uh, shouldn't have been there. There's lots of people in the world that uh, that would love to have those jobs we brought kids into our shop yeah. and we mentored them and we protected them and we teased them and we invited them into the family and yeah. uh opportunity so it's not just the incomes no it is opportunity it's opportunity and i've seen it and it's i'm glad huge. to hear you say that yeah well the majority of my friends i'm i grew up here and i the majority of my friends actually joined the rap program right um out of father mercury high school and like you just explained, like started working their co-op jobs at the ages of 16 and 17 years old. But talk about an opportunity to propel them um, for their futures in regards to becoming a ticketed journeyman by the age of 21-ish. And because of that, like they were able to literally start at the ground up and most of them no longer work on the tools. They've um, found themselves in managerial roles. But what an opportunity when you're a kid to go out to site and I had the opportunity I did it one year I worked at Syncrude for a summer to see what your parents are doing to be involved in that industry um, even if you're like myself and choose not to work in it um, the opportunity immense, immense. and the experience mm -hmm. um, um, yeah yeah so we're at the part of the show where we're going to put you a little bit on the hot spot if you're not already there it's called the Max City Minute uh, this is where Tanner is going to ask you five questions. I have no idea what he's going to ask you, um, but I'm always curious of how and what he asks. So Tanner, hit him with the Max City Minute. Question number one, what is your favorite change you've seen in Fort McMurray? There's a lot of changes that have happened since 1977. I can assure oh, you that. Yeah. Um, my favorite change, I don't really know how to answer that because there's just been so many changes. Um, we s seem to be, uh, no, I, I don't, I mean, we've, we've had people come and go. We've, uh, had, um, 
high oil prices and low oil prices. <laughs> I guess my favorite change now is higher oil prices and, uh, and the anticipation that, uh, that we have a good, strong future ahead. There you go. Question number two, what is the, your favorite thing that you've seen built in Fort McMurray? My favorite thing that I've seen built is Wood Buffalo Housing. Um, so I was a director of Wood Buffalo Housing for seven years. I was chair of planning and development for three years. And uh, it used to be Wood Buffalo Housing and Development Corporation. And the model of um, <clears throat> development, um, so we developed Taganova, for example, and the profits from that went back into more affordable housing. And there was, I think we got about, they have about 1,300 uh, families that they support now. So in the oil sands, you have um, some very high incomes, but then the service sector typically is not high income, and even uh, the um, like the police. It, it's a, a, a formula across. The, it's a federal government formula, mm -hmm. and um, so we needed. Uh, <clears throat> we need those services. So, <clears throat> um, when Buffalo Housing and Development Corporation was able to um, to supply housing for for that sector, and uh, you know, <clears throat> it's for our standard of living in Fort McMurray. And it's, uh, it, it was a great opportunity. Unfortunately, there's no development now, so now it's just called Wood Buffalo Housing, and the vacancy has gone up, and the vacancy all over Fort McMurray has gone up uh, for houses and rentals and uh, apartments and um, you know hotels, and, mm -hmm. and we're really hurting. Um, so um, again, uh, <clears throat> with higher oil prices and with some things that we're seeing recently, I think there's, that's gonna change. But anyways, yeah, it's my favorite development is uh, Wood Buffalo Housing. And, you know, maybe down the road they'll get back into development because the uh, model was um, it was shared across the country nice. and people were interested in our model. And uh, in a normal market, it uh, made a lot of sense. And, um, you know, I mean, Toronto house prices are through the roof. Vancouver house prices are through the roof. It's, it's um, yeah. Anyway, so long story, but uh, yes, Wood Buffalo Housing is my favorite build. And it helps a lot of people. Question number three. What is your best memory from spending so much time in Fort McMurray? My best memory is, uh, I think, uh, downhill skiing uh, and uh, ski hill progress. Um, Vista Ridge, um, you know, we've, we've had a little hill north of town and then... Uh, um, and then out at, uh, out at Vista Ridge, but, uh, my, my son was a ski racer and the kids were, since they were real little, uh, on the hill and, uh, and, um, my son was part of the uh, ski team and, uh, I ended up being a president of the ski team, um, and being involved with, uh, all the, um, all of the uh, the races and uh, the work that needs to be done, and uh, the traveling all over Alberta and yeah. getting people to come to Fort McMurray for an amazing our amazing hill. So um, yeah, that's 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 my favorite. Question number four: What is one draw you had to being a farmer? <laughs> I wanted to help feed the world, and uh, and um, I was looking forward to subsistence and uh, self helping and um, it uh, back then we we were in the hippie days so yeah. uh, so it was a kind of a hippie dream but uh, I studied hard was top 15 percent of my class and uh, look forward to getting into farming operations and management and um, but uh, got into other things a whole bunch of different things and um, and um, yeah no regrets and love what I do if you find a job you love, you never have to work again. Boom. And your final question, what is one thing you love about Fort McMurray that you haven't experienced anywhere else? Wow. Um, for, for me, it's, uh, it's diversity with, uh, <clears throat> without, um, without even knowing. Um, and uh, hugely uh, indigenous understanding um so i was involved with the taste of fort mcmurray and the food fest and i was uh, there's a great team doing a lot of different things um i had a pretty strong position on on uh um logistics and support but uh i learned so much with our uh, well with the the um indigenous cultural event that we held down at the sinai um 
and I learned a lot. That was absolutely amazing. Those have been your five questions. There we go. I liked your answer in regards to the farming. Um, as long as I've known you, it's funny you say you wanted to give, get into farming because you wanted to feed the world. You wanted to give back, basically. And since I've known you, you just always give back. You're always volunteering. You're always spending time in the community outside of like getting paid for doing something. So it's interesting to hear that in regards to you might not have been a farmer, but uh, your overall goal has been achieved in your life in regards to giving back in one way, shape or form. And I like to work. I like to, I like to stay busy and, uh, and dive in. So um, yeah, that's, that's exciting. That's really cool. Okay. That's really cool. So one last thing before we let you go, I want to hear a little bit about what you did at site. At site, uh, I started as um, um, moving equipment around in the mobile equipment department, then uh, fuel and lube, and then I got uh, a ticket, so opportunity again. I got right. into um, I got into uh, a trade, heavy duty mechanics, and then I was in support equipment. Then I was uh, a crane mechanic for 18 years, a mobile crane, and they sent me to Germany, trained me in Germany, and um, again, more opportunity. Uh, the Lee Bear Crane's the best in the world. And then I got into supervision, uh, planning and scheduling, and uh, software implementation, SAP. I was on the SAP team. And, um, and then major projects. Last five years were major projects on uh, operational support and uh, absolutely loved what I was doing. And um, amazing company. And uh, I would have stayed, but uh, the, all the projects dried up with the price of oil. So. That's right. So, yeah. And you, you were know, there one, for a long time, too. Yeah, 39 years there. But uh, a real quick point on opportunity up here and the oil sands and sink crew. Well, they're basically working in the oil sands. Typically, my career was 12-hour shifts. So basically what that meant is I worked five months of the year. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, six on, six off. It's really six months, but you get a month's holiday. That's so right. that allowed me to have a construction company. I own a countertop business, uh, build houses. Um, and so people across Canada need to better understand or le- need to understand the opportunity here. High incomes, lots of time off to do recreational, get out to Six Lakes, get out on skidoos or do things, businesses, all kinds of opportunity. Yeah, it is. And uh, your story is just, it's the story of Fort McMurray in regards to you had a career, you started out one thing and throughout your life, you were able to be granted opportunity and chances to do so many more things you weren't a lube tech for the rest of your life you worked your way not only up but in different roles that piqued your curiosity at the time opportunity so i was um i was president of uh, pc Mm -hmm. uh, local constituency association i was on the provincial board of pcs um just you know the opportunity came so i jumped in I was the president of the existing MLA, uh, Tanny's CA. I'm on his board. I was campaign manager for Layla, for, and I had never done that. Right. She, had, she needed somebody, thought I could do it, and uh, so I jumped in and, and I did it. So I'm on, on, on Layla's board. I'm on David Yordega's board, the MP. I'm, on, uh, I'm the delegate, one of the delegates for the upcoming uh, uh, policy conference. Um, all this opportunity. Right. Just grab on and uh, and dive in and um, and do it. Yeah. So there you go. When people think about Fort McMurray, the key word is opportunity. I agree. There you go. All right. Now, before we cut you loose today, everybody gets the shameless plug. Um, please, one more time before we let you go, tell everybody at home um, about one of the things that you're working on and how they can get involved and how they can get in contact. We... Uh... I'm looking forward to uh, getting through COVID and then, I mean, the whole world is yeah. the pandemic, but uh, um, the Food Fest, Taste of Fort McMurray, uh, the Indigenous cultural events, when we get back on track, we need lots of volunteers for those. Right. And uh, it's a wonderful way to meet people. And also, it's those are amazing events. You know, the patio party at the, on the Clearwater, the Boots and Brews at the Heritage Village, um, um, concert so those are wonderful things and then also with buildwood buffalo um we any any land developer any um home builders or renovators uh getting back on track uh, we really are doing a lot for those that are not members and i really wish they would become part of our team and then and then help and uh and then you know they get the benefits as well there you go awesome 
Well, on that note, everybody watching at home today, thank you very much for tuning in. It's been a fun one. There's no doubt about that. Once again, it blows my mind how many people are watching day after day, week after week. So thank you very much. And we'll see you tomorrow. Peace. I just die said this. That's another Max City Morning Show done. Talk about quenching your ugly thirst. Really?